Hello, welcome to our relaxing painting stream. My hair's a mess, ma. Um, <clears throat> I'm not Greg, I'm Nicole. I am definitely not Greg. We are, uh, I'm, I'm taking over for the next couple shows because he's uh, gonna be traveling. So, uh, you're stuck with me for the next few shows. Mm. So we're Dyson Dungeons. We do um, this stream, this painting stream where we do dungeon tiles. Um, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Here on Twitch and also they all go up on YouTube so you can check them out there. Um, yeah. And uh, we also have a and d show that we do Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, and that gets on YouTube and podcast as well. So you can check that out at DysonDungeons.com. Uh, we list all of that stuff there on our site. Um, the thing I'm going to be working on today, because I think um, it was held off, is doing some... Because usually I do it. Um, doing these pools and probably this little cauldron with some realistic water sort of resin um, and paint in order to create a gooey wet effect in them so right now they just have a nice base coat in them like so and I'm <clears throat> taking a look at what Greg has done. It looks like he's started washing these dungeon tiles. So, I might set some of these aside. get my chat screen up and running. <coughs> there we go. Okay. So, um, what we're going to be doing is start with these liquid water effects and then once we get those done we'll move on it looks like a lot of these tiles are ready for washing so we might move on to doing some wash application looks like he did just the floors so we have a lot of these tiles um these are our dungeon tiles that if you've been watching the show, we, we make a lot of these. We're gearing up for a store to sell these in. And um, so that's sort of where we're at. Taking a look. These look washed. Or is this one's an unwashed piece? So I'm just sort of organizing to start my day. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to start with the pools. So these are both going to be green pools. We can do them in any color. Um, this is going to be some sort of radioactive goo kind of um, energy to it. Um, so my tools for this are going to be some toothpicks in order to stir. Because um, in addition to the sort of clear drying resin that I have, which will create the slick wet effect. Um, I'm going to be mixing in some colors as well to color the goo itself. So typically what I do for these is um, I'll put some wet paint spots down, add the, the resin, stir it up to give it a swirled appearance. Um, and then after it dries a little bit, I'll put another clear coat on top a very thin one 
in order to give it a glossy finish, because sometimes the paint can mat it out a little bit. Um, yeah, it's been kind of humid here, so my hair is a mess. Sorry about that. So what I need are some paint colors. So let me just go over to my paint wheel here. Uh, this one's a good one. We have this sick green. Um, sometimes I like to add a little bit of the ivory for sort of a, a pussy color. Black to tone things down is always good. We could get like a more of a dark green. Let's see. Might have to go over here. For like this this is a dark green, so. Um and we're just gonna do one pool at a time. Um it's a little bit of a process, so take our time with it. I'm going to maybe shift slightly this way. There we go. That's better. So this is going to be a core green color. Um, this will be sort of an, a darker accent. And then we'll have some of these like highlight colors mixed in. So I'm going to start by getting my paints uh, all third up with our little paint shaker. Which vibrates the camera wildly. Okay, so we'll start with this pool here. Get sort of everything set to go. That way it's all on hand. And you know, you have a fair bit of wiggle room when you're doing this, like, it's not super difficult. So, as you can see, this is the same color that was used as the base color underneath. And and we do the base color just so if there's um, any leftover, any spots that are see-through for some reason, they won't um, show like some primer color or something underneath. So I'm just creating little dots of that will get mixed together. This will form the basis of our whole thing. Open up my resin here. And this is 
a very easy to use kind of product. So, drop in like that and let it sort of spread a little. See if I need more. Might be good here. You can see it's already carrying the paint around with it a little bit. And we will further enhance that. That looks good for the first layer. So, then we're going to take one of our toothpicks and start to spread and swirl. And sometimes you do get so the print itself has these little bubbles in it, like that, and that can actually create little points to be aware of where the um, toothpick will catch on them and flick. Creating a little bit of a splatter, so it helps to put some weight behind the toothpick to reduce that flicking effect. And since this is like an ooze pool, you know, you're looking to just get an interesting, varied pattern of colors, ultimately, here. Hmm. And since it's like an oozy pit, if you do get a little splatter, like, it's it's going to be fine. It'll add to some character and texture to the overall appearance. I'll have to clean up a little afterwards. Um, what I'm seeing is I want a little more dark over here. Oh, I'm going to add a couple drops of black over there. And you have quite a bit of leeway and time to really get this mixed up. It's not setting super fast. I'm generally going in a loosely radial pattern here um, in order to kind of create a swirl effect. You know, it's it's going to go where it wants to go, but... And we ultimately want it just looking kind of gross and oozy. out some of that blank. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think that seems pretty good. It seems like a dark ooze pit to me. And as it's drying, you can actually see the the built-in bumps are creating sort of an uneven surface effect, which is nice. Um, something we actually would like to have, so. So I'm gonna set the toothpick aside here. What you're not seeing is a flip. Well, let me move this liquid resin out of the way and then locate something solidly flippable. Here, we have two toothpicks. A little double flip action. <laughs> you want a giant mess? Yeah. That, that is what you would get with a flip of the liquid resin. So, that's uh, pool number one. I'm pretty sure you still have not seen Super Train. Alright, so what we have to do is while that one dries up here, set it so it's visible. There we go. We'll hang out, what, watch all of Super Train? No. Aren't there only like seven episodes anyway? I'm gonna go a little simpler on this one, just do green and black, and then I can add colors. Ten episodes is on track for a reboot. Oh. You're fired? Yeah, so I'm painting today because um, Greg is visiting family out in California. So I will be I will be the the showrunner, as it were, for the next couple uh, episodes, and we are doing. Slime? Poison? Whatever you want. Slime slash poison pools. <laughs> you rent a boat or a car. I think they took an aeroplane. These train jokes. They're not even really jokes. <laughs> ah, bypass the foot. Okay. I see what's happening.
Greg will be the caboose uh, right now. Oh boy. I did not realize that I signed up for train puns. Trailing behind in your hoot hoot. Okay, there's another ooze pool. I am gonna need to use some heavy duty cleaner on my fingers when I'm done with this. Gotta go pick out and pick out Steve from the shuffle. Maybe Nines can use suggestion to pitch super. Who are you? Who would Nines be pitching Super Train to? Are you pitching it to, like, the Lindrangan government? Huh. All of the trash bins are gone down here. Weird. I'll just set it aside then. Like, I don't think they have... We, we might meet the Empress, I have no idea. But... I don't think they have, like, TV. <laughs> I don't think they even have, like, radio. Let's do, like, a radio drama. Are you thinking, like, a traveling production? Like, a, a stage production, maybe? What exactly is Super Train stuff? You have one train, just make a Super Train now because you already have one regular train to compare it to. Like, Nintendo made the NES and followed it up with the Super NES. Or how Sony made the PlayStation and followed it up with the Super PlayStation. lived in the Super PlayStation world and didn't. This is like a cauldron of poison, basically. 
from my understanding. It's where the assassins go. communal poison pit you know you get back you dip your weapon in it just make sure it has nice poison coating well it's a guild so it's not really communism it's actually like old time old style capitalism so, my phone alarm The visiting assassin goes on, on and about that out there poison pit at home is way deadlier. <laughs> that checks out. What I'm basically doing here is using resin as a wet, wet medium. King of Poison sounds like a devil can spawn day. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty accurate. Welcome to the poison pit. You're at the poison pit. The poison picks you. Something like that. A poison that killed the hell out of you but made your skin super soft. So we're gonna let that dry now. So you're like... I might be, I might be killed by an assassin, but like, my body's gonna look real good at the funeral because my skin will be really nice and soft and exfoliating. Something like that. And this is why you typically wear gloves when doing this sort of thing, and I, I just didn't. So, since my hands are a mess anyway, I'll just keep running, running with it. Alright, so... Since these need some time to dry before I can do anything else with them, I'm gonna set them up here. Um, I guess I'm gonna do some more priming. Looks like a good chunk of these are ready to go for priming. Um, 
not quite everything, but a good amount. And we have our gray wash here. And when I say priming, I mean wash. The coffee I'm drinking obviously is not set in. Super soft assassins are the super soft. <laughs> yeah, that's how they don't make any noise. They don't wear shoes, but their their feet are so soft. They like to kill with, um, well, obviously the soft poison, but sometimes also smothering with a nice downy pillow. So we're going to be washing these tiles, which they all look ready to wash and ready to go. Um, you pull out the ones, I think need to be washed having not been the person painting them I'm only guessing based on appearance themed assassins birthday party assassins spa assassins food delivery assassins yeah that all makes sense Do you think assassins do, like, bring your child to work day? Bring them while they're young. Kill your children for work. <laughs> Okay, so I think everything over here has been washed from the looks of it. So this is like our little pile of not washed stuff. From what I can tell. So, assuming that what will happen is once I wash these, um... I'll see how the the resin is drying, and if it is not dry yet, we will, um, I guess what we'll do is we'll start doing, um, more tiles from the beginning. I have a pile of primed and ready to go tiles that are going to be painted in the gray, so. I'm go I am going to remember to wear gloves for those, because the wash is a little messier. Okay, so I'm gonna take my dark gray wash here, get it mixed. Yeah, exactly. That's how you you got you gotta teach them the real tricks before, you know while they're still able to absorb information. Okay. So I'm just gonna use my big old brush here. And we're gonna just go through and wash. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're welcome.
You can't see the brush strokes? Is that a problem? I have to figure out Dad Greg's my weird weird setup. Greg, my dad. <laughs> it's a painting stream, not a watching paint dry stream. Understood. I'm sorry. Thank you for your constructive criticism. Oh, you want it like that? Is that better? Authentic canned sauce. Well, the wash, I think, really adds a lot of character subtly to the final product here. Tones it all down, adds variation. It's pretty nice. This is very soft and relaxing. Been a while since I've done this in earnest. Been uh, plugging away at it, as it were. And I've been doing mostly behind the scenes stuff.
authentic flavor from incorporeal ingredients. It's like a a ghost bakery. You have to try our ghost toast. Slowly settling in. Avocado ghost toast. There you go. You know, I don't really like avocado. Uh oh. It's been a while since I've tried it, though. I should probably try it again. See if my opinion's changed, actually. It might be the texture, the creamy, kind of, but I don't know. I'll give it a shot next time. Not that avocado becomes regular, is like a regularly available thing around here. We don't keep it in stock in the house. I think, yeah. Maybe it's most likely I'll try it in like guacamole. Get more wash. I'm just using little amounts of wash because um, I have no idea how far it will go and I don't want to waste it. With these uh, rough dungeon pieces, I like to get it down in those gaps early. And bring out some of the texture in this wall, on these rougher ones.
<sighs> so. Double hydrate, okay. Happy? I don't have that much coffee. I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> You're abusing your power. Finish this piece and then I'll stretch. <sighs> Jeez. Redeeming all these channel points. You named the tile Charles. Okay, so you redeemed 10,000 channel points to name this tile Charles. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. This is completely derailing what we're doing, but that's okay. Let us get... That's so Charles, not Chuck. Gotcha. Proper time. Do well. There, Charles. Happy? Is that was that worth ten thousand channel points <laughs> to have a tile? Damn Charles. Is this one we need to set aside for you? Do you need like a little special friend? I'm not exactly sure how to let this dry. I guess I'll set it on its side like that. You can just put it up there and you just, you're just happy knowing that Charles the Tile is somewhere up there.
Yeah, you're the top 1% of channel points, so you can just use them wastefully. They lost all value to you, that sort of thing. It's nice about Nine's going, it's so fungible. Exactly. It's the best quality, it's its only quality. That sounds like a great use of time. There's not much better than trolling crypto bros, right? Why did pro profile picture PFB take off instead of icon? Um. Maybe it's just because Icon has multiple uses and PFP is very specific. Or more likely, it's one less letter to type. Yeah, but I don't think people say PFP profile picture out loud all that much. I think it's mostly used in... in you know, text format. Like, I don't, I, I don't, like, go like, oh, dude, did you see that PFP, dude? You know, when I'm, like, out, out and about. But, like, I, like, I, don't, I just don't think it comes up in conversation enough. So I don't think how it's pronounced really came into effect. I think it was just easier to type. So hexagon. <laughs>
I think between, like, because people say, like, oh, you're such an icon. <laughs> I think, oh, with the OGL 1.1. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely... Are you going, oh, no, like, you don't want this conversation to happen? <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah, it's not ideal, and, um, I think they're seeing a lot of blowback for it. Um, we had already been talking about making a system for our stream that's, like, a uh, a system designed much more <laughs> yeah I, I'm sure that's what they were thinking um, we were already talking in the future for like a campaign 2 sort of thing to switch to a system designed by us for a more narrative cinematic feel than what D and D is capable of, um, and I think we're just thinking about accelerating that plan slightly. Um, that's kind of our our take on it in terms of as far as the show is concerned. I think Lexi posted something on our official Twitter about it, um, if I remember. Just making a comment on it. Um, yeah, it, it definitely got a lot of blowback and it kind of deserved said blowback. Um, a lot of people canceling their D&D beyond subscriptions and stuff in protest. From what I've seen. One person I saw who apparently helped write it. I don't know. It's this is unconfirmed, so you know, don't like they they had written the original OGL as sort of trying to be future proof, basically, and last well into the future. So it came as a bit of a surprise. I think that a good chunk, not the sole reason, but definitely a major contributing factor to D&D's success has been the OGL. And I think they're playing a dangerous game trying to mess with it. Because I think you know, D and D has a lot of visibility and power and visibility. People like it's it's the TTRPG system that the layman knows has heard of. You know, the person who's not in the hobby will have heard of it, whether it's Stranger Things or whatever. You know. <laughs> I think yes I know there's a lot of people who like to argue though that there's a lot of games on the market which is true um, I think D&D &D, one of its primary advantages has been um, accessibility and ease of learning um for people to get into the hobby. Um, and it's sort of a generic theme. You know, it's just sort of loosely fantasy-ish, you know? Whereas something like 
a lot of systems have very specific themes. Like Call of Cthulhu is Lovecraftian horror. Um, you know, Mouse Guard is like you're playing little mice soldier warriors like Redwall. So, and obviously Pathfinder is much more D&D like being based on D&D originally. Um, but I think the thing that the, the, the powerful tool of D&D is that it was accessible and got a lot of people into the hobby. Chris Pine is the main character in Lost Lot of Interest. Yeah, I don't have a strong opinion on Chris Pine either way for the movie. I, I saw the trailer and I went, yeah, okay. That was sort of my take on the D&D movie. <laughs> Just like, sure. Historically, D&D movies are fantastic. Uh, Jeremy Iron. Um. But. We've been. As far as the show goes, we've been thinking about moving away from D&D. &D in the future anyway. Um. And I think the OGL stuff just sort of. Englishman Hugh Grant, I think. It is pretty funny. I haven't actually watched them, but people have been saying that he's been they they've been doing like cast interviews and stuff about it. And it's clear Hugh Grant has like no idea what any of this is and he's like, I just did what I was directed. <laughs> We need a TTRPG based on the movie Dragonheart 3, the sequel that came out 15 years after the first sequel no one asked for. Dragonheart, that's the um, CGI dragon with Sean... Uh -uh. Why am I blank? Sean Connery. As the voice of the dragon, right? Where he gives the prince, like, his heart. Yeah. It's a good movie. Really solid. I didn't know they made two other Dragonheart movies. But, yeah, um... What I'm gonna do is, uh... It came out in 2020. English, Scottish, French, Russian, Sean Connery. Unless it's Highlander. In which case, he's supposed to be, uh, Egyptian. Even though he's 100% Scottish. And for some reason, he doesn't try to be anything but Scottish, like regular Sean Connery, but in Highlander, his character is supposedly, uh, Egyptian. So, I have no idea what that's about. Um, what I'm going to do, because I have all the tiles washed now, I'm going to take my break a little early so I can get set up for the next batch of tiles um, without being too boring. So we're going to do an early break. Um, I'm going to yeah grab some more coffee and get set up for the next batch. I might do two short breaks instead of one longer break. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, I'll be right back. Um, I can talk more about the OGL if we want, or we can talk about Sean Connery movies as a dragon. We'll, we'll see what happens when I get back. All right, be right back.
Okay, we're back. <sighs> Dragonheart can dance. We don't have a dragon dance off movie and it's a crime. That is true. Dragons deserve a dragon dance off movie. Just think about how much they could do with four legs. Plus, Hollywood loves movies that are just, like, just CG. Alright, so... You'd think they'd be all, all for it. Rules don't say a dog can't play basketball, and the rules don't say a dragon can't dance. Exactly, it's the air bud of dance movies. Alright, so we're going to be base coating. I pulled out a huge pile of freshly, well not for like a day or two ago, primed tiles. And we're going to be base coating. Yay! Very exciting. So I'm going to mix up our gray here. Ooh, wobbly cam. And yeah, I guess we're just gonna go for it. I'd actually do this in stages, where I do like the top, and then I'll let it dry and do the sides. Um, and that'll actually end up being a little quicker and less messy. Dragons can dance, you just gotta play music they like. Oh, they can dance, you just have to play music they like, yeah. I feel like this didn't get mixed enough, this paint. It feels a little power metal, but they use grills to make the sounds. It's very funny what the vibrations from the paint mixer do to the camera.
Yeah, you can't hear the buzz of the mixer. Just see the visual effects. There it is. For some reason, this paint is... It's going on a little thin. Take a toothpick here. Give it a bit of a stir. Maybe it's just really congealed on the bottom. Um, yeah, it might be a way to do that. I have no idea. How though? Seems like it might be a little better. Giving it a stir there. It must have just really congealed on the bottom that even the shaker didn't get it. Because it seems better now. Why is there a Jedi named Shaggy that looks exactly like Shaggy? Why would you not? The galaxy is full of mysteries and wonder. Why not? Shaggy. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. But traditionally, Star Wars has not taken itself very seriously. I know. It was a fan name, but it stuck. He did immediately die. You know, Grievous stepped on him. Nice. Um, I'd say a good portion of Star Wars is a fan thing that stuck and then immediately died.
It's a oh, pretty funny Star Wars meme that was just like this huge pile of blocks and they were mostly being supported by one tiny little like awkwardly placed block. And it was holding up this huge pile and it was like the huge pile of blocks were all Star Wars lore and characters and then like that one tiny block was like a costume designer in the 70s thought this color looked good or like thought this looked neat. Getting paint on the over. Totally normal. I think, didn't the trailer for Mandalorian 3 come out like today? Season 3. Okay, saw that. It dropped today. I haven't seen it yet, but... All the people who watched Mandalorian but didn't bother watching Book of Boba Fett are gonna be like, what? Why, why is Baby Yoda back? <laughs> So all I'm doing here is base coating. So this is our gray dungeon set with obviously getting just covering everything, well almost everything, with a nice neutral gray in order to do all the details later.
I'm intentionally not doing the sides right now so I have somewhere to hold and letting them dry so that I can come back around and do all the sides at once. Just sort of dividing it up to reduce the amount of mess I make. And because mess is wasted paint, ultimately. Too terribly much happening when you're doing the base coating. There's not a lot of innovation or variation to do. Just a matter of getting it covered. We're actually looking. This will probably be something that you know in in the future we'll just airbrush the color right on, um, just to do it much quicker. For now, we're going to hand paint it. $30 a month for premium membership of DMD Beyond? Is that how much it is? That's quite a bit. Did Wizards increase the price when they bought it? I don't feel like I remember it being that much. You don't think that's actually a D&D Beyond number. I think it's something new they're trying to pitch where their books are a subscription service with the lowest levels not even having access to it. Okay, so it's like, yeah. Rather than buying the books, it's like you pay X amount and you get access to, like, 
X number of books. I mean, I can definitely see that going, because if you buy the books, now they're obligated to, you know, you have to be able to access them. Theoretically. Whereas if you get the books unlocked as part of a subscription, you're... Uh, if you unsubscribe, then, then you no longer get access to the books. It's sort of like Spotify. You don't own the music, you just get access to it by being subscribed or Netflix or whatever, you know. So I don't, I, don't, I can't say I'm surprised by that. that's the business model most companies seem to like to use. I feel like D&D Beyond was definitely a little more user-friendly when they were a third-party company. Consumer-friendly, maybe? That'd be the right way to word it, yeah. I think, because I read through most of the OGL, like actually read it, and I think that its biggest thing, because it, what it actually says is, like, it's not going to target 99.9% .9 of creators, but what I think it's really it's sort of ultimate sin is that it washes the uh, the sort of hope that third party and independent creators have thinking there's a future in in this space um, it feels like it kind of it's, it's less about like actual hard effect that it would have on most people and more of an emotional effect that it has on the community at large, where it felt like a going from a open and um, creative sort of larger world like larger community and it felt like it got suddenly very contracted yeah it's so softer than hard yeah it, it's like yeah it's not gonna affect like pretty much anyone other than some of the third party companies out there but it's sort of like saying, like, yeah, you know, your dream of eventually being one of those third-party companies? Yeah, you're, that's never going to happen. And it make, and it, it has a very uh, dampening effect on the community as a whole. Because now there's a bunch of uncertainty. You no longer feel like the space is owned by the community. It feels much more like the corporation that literally owns it, owns the space. Um, which doesn't lend itself to a 
a vibrant creative community. So I, I think that's probably like the biggest sort of sin of the uh, OGL 1.1 is not so much what it actually does, but what it feels like it does, which I'd say is honestly as important, if not more important than what it literally does. Because, you know, if you drive the creatives out of a, a community, it very quickly uh, loses the whole community. It definitely felt like a decision made by um, brand lawyers, like trying to protect a brand. And it's kind of actually coming on the heels of some stuff like, like wizards dropping uh, Rivals of Waterdeep, for example, which have been a very good, great, uh, well, great D&D uh, &D show. I think they're on like 12 seasons or something, and they're in the middle of like their last like season and a half wrapping up the whole story and they just sort of got dropped by wizards and i feel like I, I don't know it's maybe conspiratorial but it feels like maybe they're related this ogl change and dropping stuff like that this sort of like brand contraction Mo movement towards like contracting control over the brand I also feel like a lot of companies overestimate the amount of goodwill consumers have towards a brand. Like, if anything's a lesson, like, look at how quickly people turned on one of the most beloved brands out there, Disney, when the Florida Don't Say Gay Bill stuff was happening. Like, and they got turned on by like everyone like the republicans and conservatives got turned on them for uh for walking back their stuff and the liberals turned on them for going along with it in the first place if you're going to argue that contract changes when you're admitting that you change draw attention to some yeah I mean that's the thing is like the yeah it, it, it doesn't their argument is that the OGL doesn't really change how it affects the vast majority of the community and which does then beg the question of why are you changing it and yeah, it draws attention to something in a negative way. And you're exactly right. Like, like if it's, and I know they, they issued that sort of statement. I wouldn't say apology, cause it, 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 it was very corporate speak. And they're like, you know, we're looking to protect the identity of the company and its properties going forward as we move into video games and movies and stuff. And it's like, Sure, but like you could maybe instead of changing the whole OGL, maybe just put in a clause that says like for video games and movies, this applies rather than change the whole thing. Yeah, that was a very tone deaf statement that did not do much to uh, quell the fear surrounding D&D.
Leave the tabletop rules and games alone and just protect the story's location setting, which is which is what they had been doing, like in the um, like fan content and stuff like that. A lot of it was like, hey, if you write like a campaign setting or something, you know, certain words are protected, like beholder, illithid, things like that, right? Some of the like these sort of just iconic defining character monsters and characters and stuff are are like company property and you can't you can't just like profit off of those without um without approval but <clears throat> when it came to like just the rules themselves It became a problem. It, it wasn't a problem, I mean. So if you're, if the intent was to protect the sort of IP of D and D in terms of things like movies, video games, things like that. Like, you could have easily just said, hey, we're adding a clause to the OGL that just protects, like, large budget movie, protects us from, like, large budget movies and video games being made. And people would have been like, oh, sure, I guess. I'm not, I'm not making a large budget video game or movie. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> but the the rest of the OGL is remaining unchanged, you know. That sort of thing would have been... People would have been like, eh, it's kind of weird, but, you know, it really doesn't affect anything. But... As usual, in America, corporations are going to be sketchy. And be and do make dumb choices. Which is why best practices is to never really have. Like, don't, don't stan any corporation, because they don't care, ultimately. Generally, it's best not to, like, you know, put too much uh, emotional stock in, in any given thing that you are like out completely out of your control like i say the same thing with like sports teams and stuff it's like if you're tying your happiness to a corporation making a good decision or a sports team winning or anything like that you are sort of setting yourself up for failure and to be disappointed I will say the online discourse has been kind of, um, around the OGL, has been kind of mean to people who are like, hey, I, I agree, I think this is shitty, but I, I, you know, I like playing d and I like doing this thing with my friends, and people are like, I've seen people shit on, um, people who aren't, like, defend, aren't defending it in any way, shape, or form just saying like you know this is a thing i like and they're like well you liked the wrong thing you should have liked x game instead like fill in the blank game that i personally lo like I, you know it it, it it seems weird that it's being used this shitty 
shitty OGL thing is being used as a wedge to attack people who are just like, I liked playing a game. And they're like, you were having fun the wrong way. But that's internet discourse for you. You always have fun the wrong way. That, that is your, what you're famous for. Because I think a lot of people are like, I like D&D. &D. I don't, I don't like Hasbro. I don't like Wizards. I just like the game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, like just because w Wizards and Hasbro are handling this situation in a completely idiotic way and it's causing problems in the community. Like, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't give people license to be mean. Where it's like, well, you shouldn't play D&D, &D, you should play whatever system I'm actively promoting. You know? You saw Six recently, it was stupid and fun and you liked it. Is that like a show or a movie? Six? I, I'm very out of the loop. Um, because I think the ultimately, especially in a capitalist world, you can't be, you can't have a consumer held accountable for, um, six is a mu musical about the wives of King Henry the, uh, is that 12th? I think the Roman numerals are backwards, but okay, that's pretty. A musical about his wives. Oh, the 8th, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The guy, the king who killed all his wives, basically, and divorced them and stuff. You know, that's, pr that's pretty cool. I didn't know uh, that was a thing. I bet that was pretty... I, I'm assuming that was played up as a comedy, if it's a musical about the wives. Like a dark comedy kind of thing. I'll have to see if the soundtrack's somewhere. I do like a musical. And I like a dark comedy too, like, you know, in the Sweeney Todd, uh, Three Penny Opera sort of, uh, direction. Six wives each taking inspiration from different modern day pop stars and ranting about their experiences. Okay, I'm gonna have to look up the soundtrack for this. And give it a listen. That sounds pretty good. So, I know the people chatting know this, but speaking of musicals, my wife, Lexi, likes to watch the movie Twilight, well, all the Twilight movies. I know, big shocking revelation here. And since we have them on a lot in the background because she likes them, I've been slowly trying to develop, uh, uh, in a joke way, making a Twilight musical where I'll take lines and I'll turn them into songs 
And she kind of loves it and kind of hates it, I think. The fourth wife was a German, so it became very Eurovision. Lots of fun. Her stars that she saw. He saw her painting and was like, oh my god, what is that? And that person was... That uh, 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 cringe. Oh boy. Yikes. That's pretty good. Sounds like I should have been the bard because I'm like... Turning Twilight lyrics, Twilight lines into lyrics. Um... And I try and do it in like a very musical sort of vibe to really annoy her. But I don't know, I think she likes it. Maybe Soria will just become the bard, too. In our D&D. I'll tank as a bear. I'll heal as a druid. And I'll, I'll just learn an instrument and start barding it up. And then none of you will have anything to do. Everyone takes bard levels next level. Just just so we can be your backup band behind you. What would our band name be? Is it Midnight Brunch featuring Nines, the Tabaxi Bar? Or is it like Nines Nines's Midnight Brunch Band? Like what's the what's the name? Yeah, major illusion. I, you'll have your own backup bards. Fair. So what would be the point in us taking bards if you're going to make illusionary bards? because it's the best class. The character, you have this unique idea for the bard. <laughs> yeah, the super unique bard idea there. Much original.
you're writing lyrics and it's just you confessing your many crimes but people are like these are pretty funny lyrics i can't believe it but you definitely didn't steal multiple buys i blew up a city that sort of thing technically it was also You took too long, now your pie is gone. Claims of Iron Veil. A lot of unnecessary details about how the city blew up. <laughs> this seems extremely specific. Uh, there's a lot of people specifically named in this, and. Hmm. Weird. The guy who did the exploding famous on the side. of the bomber famous. There you go. Once I get through this layer, I'm going to take another short break. Um, there's still a good number to do, so I'm not popping out anytime soon. But um, that way I'll give them a chance to dry a little more, and then I can start painting the sides, the bottom edges that I've been holding on to. 
Um, which should go considerably quicker than the the rest of the part piece. A song specifically about how we personally killed Brucalion. Death in the Dragon family, exactly. That's a good title. And how the shirt you're wearing, the chain shirt you're wearing, is made out of him. Probably easier to write songs based on events that happened in the campaign. about how you stole a magic item from the voice and then immediately lost it. First defeated by mines, then made into size nine. Because it's a shirt. Gotcha. Everyone loves slash hates your baby mammoth song. Bring your amp in there and down tune everything. That's something we should look for when we get to Drogmara is a magical amp for nines. Should write that down. Or like a fervent amp. Oh, there are guitars and stuff that just do it magically. They just magically amplify. Well, we can look for that then. I'm sure they'll have something like that in the capital. How much is your magic guitar? Uh, 10,000 gold. That's ridiculous, I'll just steal it.
save someone and have them craft out of gra gratitude. I'll trade you a talking skull for it. Yep, you know, delivered 30 sessions later after you forget about it and you're like, oh wow, a fan sent me this. Having a mail service is a good way to power cap us. Because, like, if we are having something delivered, they just, like... Lexi can just, like, slow down when it gets there. Making you less squishy. Yeah. I gotta keep nines a bit squishy. I'm wondering if since it's alchemically treated, nines would take the skull of a comedian and use it for an act. I hope we find a funny character that dies. Find a funny character and kill him. Yeah. Anything for the sake of art, right? Especially murder. Kind of lighthearted villain. I, I don't know. I think the voice is kind of lighthearted as a villain. Handsome Jack character. <laughs> Well, in our next recorded episode, you're going to have to put on a performance. I hope you know that, right? Because we got you a stage booking on the ship we're on. Which is a bit ahead of where everyone else is. <laughs> That's true.
turning villains into allies is kind of something your home group is really good at. So you figure Alexis would make some funny villains convert into trust untrustworthy antiheroes. Well, she kind of did with Coromon. He was he was a baddie in the first act of the game, and then he kind of he worked with us to to do our heist. So you know, there there was that already. <laughs> Are you talking about the tangy crab waitress that you helped run into? He's kind of funny, and like us, he's he's sort of like the straight man to our group, though. You know. That's... that's true. But that's sort of the problem. Nimes is such a bombastic character, like... You know, who would play well off of Nimes? Be funny if Nines becomes super rich from all the seed money he invests in companies that he's not keeping track of. That would be pretty funny. Need money because people have to pick it up off the ground after he throws it out. Um, that's fair. He buried and watered it to make more money. That sounds like something Nines would do. What money can grow on trees? That's awesome. You know, with the trajectory of our campaign, I feel like when we get to Drogmara, 
And we use that deed that we've been carrying around to get some land in Drogmara. Or a building or whatever it's to. What we need to do is create like a base of operations where we live on the top, like two floors, but the bottom floor is just a restaurant. That we like hire someone to operate. Suddenly, Nine says, strong opinions on property taxes, and Soria is unaware of what a property taxes is. I mean, Soria... You have a piece of paper that says you own property. Exactly. Alright, so... Oh. I missed one. Dang it. Well. I missed the big one. Once this one is painted, um, I'm going to take another short break while some of this stuff dries. And then we'll do the sides and touching up. Um, and see where we go, what time it is when that's done. And we can call our restaurant the Midnight Brunch. Like, name our restaurant after ourselves. And it can be like an invite-only restaurant, but to be invited, you just have to go there and say, can I come in, and then they invite you. But the mystique of being invite-only will be our major, major selling point. And that way, whenever we're staying there, we can come down and be like, I want food. <laughs> I feel like our, our base of operation, it'd be very awkward if the voice there. Well, if we become like the most famous place in Drogmara, then I mean, he probably would. We can even, we could build a little stage for you to perform at. You know, I can provide recipes. Like Muriel's uh, curry. Right? Old Seth can um, be the bouncer, I guess. See, I think we need to have our like base of operations be on top of a restaurant that we own but pay someone else to run properly. Oh yeah, he can make the plates. He can, all of his, all the plates are handmade by Olseth. That's a good idea. Cause he likes doing pottery. Okay, now I'm going to take a little short break in the basement underground to Staxis, exactly. I'm going to take a short break now, 
let some of this paint dry a bit. Um, that way I can work on doing touch up and the sides of them. Um, and so I'll be right back and then we'll just go to the end and see how far we go. All right. Thanks. Be right back.
Alright, thanks for being patient everyone. I got a little sidetracked by Lexi. We got talking, got distracted, but I'm back now. Um, so, I'm gonna clean up this brush a little. Who, who are you demanding entertainment from? All set? Um... I'm the entertainment, FYI. I'm being entertaining right now, cleaning off a brush. So entertaining. All right, now that I'm done being entertaining, there is no dance option. I will not allow that to be a thing. To glove mode and we will finish base coating all of these pieces some of the earlier ones before I started it need some touching up as well but we'll just do that at the same time the little light that thank you So I'm going to quickly paint the sides. I should be able to finish these in the hour, so. Start placing them out of the way. I am going to need to open a different bottle. I pretty much used this whole bottle doing these. The only bottle you need is screw. Is that a type of uh, liquor? I, I honestly, I don't really know liquors, so. Peanut butter whiskey. Weird. I like peanut butter. And I love whiskey. Can't get enough of it. You know me. Is that true? 
I feel like a lot of Europeans, like, honestly, really like non-Americans, like peanut butter is not a thing outside of like the North American continent. It's kind of weird. Like. It's a, it's a very American thing for some reason. I guess it was made here. The one thing Americans do right. Yeah, I'm trying, I was trying to think of other things Americans do right. Um... Turns out that turns things that have no right being butter into butter. Um, Americans also do another thing right, being able to turn right on red. It's not really a thing that happens outside of America in the traffic laws. Although there are some countries that, like Italy, there you just don't follow the traffic laws because, you know, why would you do that? That's true, yeah, I'm consistently good at that. I don't think that's a good thing, but we are definitely able to top the charts. I'm sure the filters are getting up, but one of our dogs is barking a little bit. It's kind of like in a cute way. Huh. People who vape in their cars get gobs of oil on their windshield that screws with headlight glare. So, like, the oil is refracting the light all weird. I guess. Well, I guess that's a thing. Yeah. Can't see anything that's great and good. And there you go. So don't spread oil on the inside of your windshield is the uh, message. that the bold um, uplifting message that we're, we're giving here. Don't cover your windshield in oil. <laughs> it's America, whatever you want. It is kind of shocking how much like we, we just let people like like cars are inherently dangerous. Like a car I'm switching bottles by the way. Uh, you know a car is a big, heavy thing that goes really, really fast. Like, a car is quite dangerous. And we're just like, yeah, you untrained person, you're responsible for that, can fix it however you want, and uh, just hope that it's safe. That's fine to do. Oh, you built that car yourself in your garage? Yeah. 
get on our public roads. Like, it's kind of funny how much, like, how laissez-faire we are about cars. When they're easily one of the most dangerous things in, like, day-to-day -day life. Or it's like, oh, you have to have all the safety equipment in your car. Unless it's an older car, then it's fine. Because we didn't have safety rules back then. So as long as it's an old car when the rules didn't apply, you're fine. And then you're like, but isn't this car the reason why we have those rules now? Yeah, but you know, go ahead and drive it. Yeah, yep. That is definitely a thing we still do. I'm sure you're not talking about any company owned by a billionaire who recently purchased a social media site. You just put out a banger tweet, too. Yeah, what was your... I, I honestly, I haven't gone on Twitter at all since... Since he purchased it, so... What was... What was your banger tweet about? Getting food at a fast food joint, being told, enjoy your food, and responding with you too. I, I have definitely done that. Be like, enjoy your food, or thanks for shopping with us, or, you know, what any one of those, and I go, you too. Because you're like, you think it's like, enjoy your, have a good day. <laughs> buy extra food so you can hand it to them when you screw up and if you don't screw up you get extra food so it's like an incentive honestly having worked in the service industry I, I feel like I just sort of like when that when that happened and it was pretty normal to have that happen you just sort of go like yeah okay like it's it's not actually embarrassing or anything you just like the person wasn't paying attention oh okay
the two extremes for dealing with a situation that requires no dealing with. I like it. After I get all of these base coded, and what I'll probably do next uh, episode is base coat the rest of them first, um, because I'll be able to clear off all of the tiles that we washed at the start of the episode and make some space. Um, But after I finish these today, I'm going to take a look at my pools that I started with and we'll add a little extra translucent layer over the top to give them a slightly more oozy gooey look. Because sometimes the paint can mat out a little bit, make it a little flat. See that you haven't chosen violence if you care to expand on that. Wrong choice. As an American, <laughs> how that sentence should start. While I'm doing this, I'm also doing a little spot uh, cleanup where maybe the paint was a little thin. Um, you know, just keeping an eye out for those things. As you can see, this section goes a lot quicker because I'm just doing the sides, basically. The bottom edge and the occasional random spot. Like this one, for some reason the floor didn't get as much uh, adhesion, so I'll just put a, another quick partial layer on top to fill that out.
Easy peasy. Which one of these? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering which one of these is Charles. I'll just have to keep an eye out for Charles. Getting all these guys painted in. Oh, the weather lately. Jerk calls us call center. What a monster. This was one of the ones I washed, wasn't it? Not one of these base coats. One of these guys over here. There we are. There's Charles. I was worried. 
<laughs> Charles is doing good. Dried up a bit. Good old Charles, that's right. Did he save your life in the war? Which war? The tile war? The clone wars? The gear wars? Never really about the Gears of War. Right, is this like a Gears of War? I, you know, I never actually played it. Is it Gears of War? Uh, there, there weren't any Gears in it? And isn't it mostly... I, okay. I might be completely wrong on this, having not played Gears of War. The Gears, the real conflict of the Gears. Okay, so it's not Gears of War, it's a Rick and Morty joke. Again, haven't watched Rick and Morty, so. I am not good for cultural references, generally speaking. Unless they're very weird niche cultural references. Or Star Trek. I'm looking forward to uh, Data's, Commander Data's uh, statement of the Irish reunification of 2024. But showrunner Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have not been problematic at all. I know about Dan Harmon's stuff when he was on a showrunner for whatever the other show he was a showrunner for. I have no idea about Justin Roiland though. I could not even tell you what he looks like. Well yeah, I know I, I, I have seen Harmon Quest, so I am familiar with uh Harmon, but I think he had some uh Abuse of power issues. I want to say, was it community? Something like that. Another show he ran. That weren't like, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about like severity because I have no idea about it, honestly. But they're both in trouble for the same sexual harassment shit. Yeah, that's that's sort of what I'd heard. I know nothing about he was a jackass on Kamehameha, but it actually seems like he grew as a person. Now Justin is in real hot water. That's sort of what I'd heard. Um, again, I don't really follow these people. So I have no clue, but um, that's, what it, that's sort of what I'd heard about Dan Harmon. That he was a, a kind of a jackass and abused his power a bit. But, like, 
apologized properly about it and tried to like do better, which is what you're like supposed to do. But I have no idea anything about Justin Roiland. Uh, is he in like a voice actor on High on, High on Life? The only thing I know about that game is screenshots that I've seen. It really does not seem at all. Ah, gotcha. Uh, it doesn't really... High on Life really didn't seem like the kind of game that appealed to me, which is fine. Like, I don't think any game has to appeal to me specifically, but it, uh... I saw like a half, like a 30 second trailer of it went, yeah, no, and <laughs> that's all I know about the game. But I'm assuming he's a voice actor or helped write it or something. And now he's like, stuff's coming out about him. He basically is all of the high on light. It's just the Justin voice. It was on Game Pass. Feels like a Rick and Morty episode, but they don't give you a break with the side characters. Having not watched, I think, okay, that's not fair. I saw half of an episode of Rick and Morty. And based on that knowledge alone, I feel like not having a break from the side characters would be pretty awful. Disagree vigorously with great sausage comes great responsibility. I am guessing that this is a reference, I don't know. To either High on Life or Rick and Morty. I mean, Hammerai transcends references. See, I feel like maybe this is just the show, like, people make references to things I haven't seen. And I go, huh, I have no idea what that means. All right, so. What we have is... Fine, you'll stick with Super Train. Yeah, make references to a show absolutely no one's seen. There you go. That's the solution we need in. Including yourself. So. We got our resin is sort of settled in. I might... I'll check with Lexi on if she wants this like more translucent -y. but here's some of our poison pool poison slash ooze pool and you can see as it dries there is some matte sections where the paint is most prominent and since we want this to be sort of translucent um what we're gonna do is put another layer of our acrylic on top of it and it'll create a um a shiny translucent top to the pool um and then i think i'm like completely out of space on this uh table like 
So, uh, if you can't see your face in the pool, it needs better reflection. Well, that's what we're doing. But I might end once I pour these because I don't have any space to do anything else. Um, until I can start clearing some of this off. So, what we're gonna do is one at a time. Gently pour a little, about a quarter size bit of our resin, or water, realistic water resin. And then we're gonna just ooze it around to coat. And it's kind of fine if it goes over the edge because what we're, you know, an ooze pool shouldn't be clean. And what we're looking for is just a nice thin coat to create that reflective quality. And there's one little section that doesn't want to get coated. So we're just going to take a toothpick and kind of gently some, add a tiny drop more right there. There we go. Now we're going to give this at least 24 hours to dry. Um, but it will keep this sort of reflective quality that you're seeing here. Because we're putting this extra layer while having this nice uh, goo underneath. So you can sort of see the difference that putting that extra coat makes. So we're going to set that pool to the side. And now we'll coat this pool. And like, yeah, this stuff takes, you know, it can take a, a while to fully set. Um, I'd say at least 24 hours, if not more. So when we come back on Friday, we'll get a good idea of its final, final form in D DBZ terminology. This isn't even its vinyl form, exactly. Some of the fogginess that's in there will clear as it dries um, as well. And it will become a little more translucent and show... He's not defeated. Needs more dead Krillin. Yep, all the DBZ references are coming out. DBZ references I will get up until the end of the Cell Saga. Stopped watching after that. So the pink guy, the weird cat guy that I've seen pictures of, I won't, I won't get him. But as long as it's pre Cell Saga, <laughs> I will. I'll understand here. Are you just googling like Dragon Ball Z references right now? So. I feel like this also could use 
Quoting 30 year old anime is how you are shown to be hip and trendy. So, I am gonna give this cauldron a tiny bit of translucency. Your favorite superhero, Translucent? Is that an actual superhero? Are they invisible? Oh, it's from the boys. Yeah, I don't do well with shows like the boys. I don't, like... Jerks, I guess, and I know it's kind of a very dark show. Alright. I'm guessing Translucent's invisible. I'm gonna call it there because I just have a lot of stuff that needs to dry and by the time we hit two o'clock I'll just have been sitting here. Um, when we come back I'll be doing more gray coating and um, on the rest of them there's a little view. I can clear out all of these parts. This is here's Charles. That's a goodbye. Uh, yeah. So. I will give Charles a boyfriend or girlfriend in part two if you spend 10,000 channel points to name their boyfriend slash girlfriend. Otherwise, no. I need to squeeze those channel points out of you somehow. <laughs> um... So I'm going to leave it there. I have some cleanup to do, and um, we'll be back on Friday. I will be back um, on Friday and Monday. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. Okay, I'm holding. I'm going to keep doing my little read, but I won't leave. How's that sound? Um... We go from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays with these uh, streams. They go up on YouTube as well, so you can always find them if, there if you miss one. And... God damn it. What? We go hard. Um, and we have our D&D show at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sundays here on Twitch. Otherwise, those also go up on YouTube and podcast. I think the name is limited to one, so you have to reset it. Because, well, Shy Guy had named Stairmaster, our Beholder, previously. Um, Alright, what we'll do is after this show, I will go and see if I can reset it. I don't know Twitch that well, so I'll go reset it. And that way, both of you can name some tiles. I will keep Charles separate so that Charles will stick around um, next episode, this Friday. So I'll just make sure to tune in Friday, see what other stupid names we get for our tiles. All right. Charles will get a new home someday. Exactly. So thank you for watching, everyone. Um, and I look forward to seeing you Friday. They're all named Charles. That's correct. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And thanks if you're on YouTube. 
Thanks for watching. Um, see you later. Bye.